Zuleha, another guest coming up. I think I throw it over to you and let you let you do the introduction. I'll let you do the honours. I'll let you do the honours with this one. Yeah. All right. Uh, Look, we're we're about to be joined by a very busy state MP who's who does a tremendous job in the northern metropolitan region. He's the representative I know very well because we share an allegiance to a football club. It's Melbourne City. His name is Craig Ondaatje. He's uh, a hard worker and he's going to give us a little insight into what's happening around us during this this global emergency that has shocked uh, an awful lot of people. Uh, It's made a tremendous impact on our lives. But let's find out from Craig just how it's impacted businesses and uh, residents and constituents in the northern metropolitan region. Craig Ondaatje, welcome. I'm going to get you to turn the microphone on, is it? Mike, is microphone on or off? see you. Yeah. yeah, we can see him. But we can't lip read you. Uh, no, yeah, lip reading. This is where no, yeah, we tell no. <laughs> we tell some some story that gets us through this impasse. Here we go. Let's see. <laughs> okay. I love okay, these. The this is a bit like live television. I can remember Isn't working it? many many years ago with Graham Kennedy, and uh, Graham would say to us, uh, "There's oh. nothing more exciting working at TV. There is no seatbelt, no safety harness, but we still expect you to do your darndest <laughs> to get the job done." What did you, while we're waiting for Craig to find a microphone, what did you make yes. of Professor Mansouri? Uh, look, his insight is amazing. I was just remember thinking about, you know, his last point about Ramadan and how it can be quite different in Muslim-majority countries. Obviously, Tunisia is one of many. And with my Turkish background, um, I was born here, but I hear of the, the Ramadan and the Eid in Turkey and other Muslim-majority countries. It's just very different to me that um and you try to i often think george of the migrant communities that have had to come to say australia or the us and trying to re um live those moments and, and the fact that's that a good point easy. It's, it's no it's it's a struggle and i can remember it being a part of two communities uh, growing up uh, or three mm-hmm. communities if you include the australian community Um, And it was a balancing act. And and I can remember in the very early days, the late 50s, early 60s in Australia, especially in Sydney. um, Can I just tell you, can I just give you a sense of just how different things were? In in the late 50s, early 60s, there were no such things as delicatessens nor supermarkets. So, Mm. you know, your shopping list looked very different. And you shopped daily. You didn't shop... Three weeks oh, ahead, really? or wow. there was no, there was no, there was no Costco, and in the uh, yeah. early fifties or the middle fifties, when I was about five, six or something, I can remember there were no such things as refrigerators. So this modern world of ours has brought many changes. I know you're stunned and you can't believe it, but uh, we right. we we must understand that you know everything didn't happen yesterday, and that the mobile yeah. phone has only been around since about well the iPhone since 2007, the iPad since 2010, um, Mm. and uh, the iPod, I think, 2004. And yet your children probably think, you know, they've been around for a lifetime. Forever. Yeah, I went through high school without a mobile. (laughs) Yeah, their lifetime. I went through high school without a mobile phone. I got my first one when I was 21. And whereas my kids, yeah, they can't imagine life, you know, through high school without a mobile phone. Yeah, thing life is changing very quickly, and I guess like um, Fetty said, this COVID nineteen is going to change. Well, hopefully for the better. This is where the inner let's, peace part comes into it. Let's see if we can, can change our fortunes meeting? on. <laughs> let, let me see if we can change some fortunes tonight on Ramadan conversations. Uh, Craig Ondachi, are you welcome? Uh, are you time? It's a time for you to welcome yourself back. Ramadan Mubarak, there he is. my friends. Oh, he's done too. that. <laughs> How are you? Uh, it's good it's, it's good to be with you i am very very well albeit um we're locked down to home well look there are there are some very troubling times for a great many people uh, a great many of your constituents uh, we yes. touched on it just before you came on and i want to i want to know from your perspective i i know how busy you have been 
uh, working with uh, a number of key organisations that do some tremendous work behind the scenes that don't get enough support or acknowledgement. Uh, uh, I just want to know, from what you've seen, from your perspective, how are the businesses coping in the northern metropolitan region with this COVID-19 pandemic? You know, George, right across the Australian landscape, businesses have been struggling. But Australian business community and Australians in general are a very tough, resilient, courageous population. They've had to be. We've been through things like tragic bushfires, cyclones, floods, drought, and now COVID-19. And what I'm seeing is innovation that's off the scale and it's something to celebrate. So what you're saying to me is that people are showing their agility and their smarts and getting out there and thinking outside the square. You know, there's a tenacity that I'm seeing uh, amongst Australians at this time, particularly as we are facing some challenges around mental health, uh, around uh, family violence, around parental and carer stress, around the obvious economic uh, and social challenges that we're facing right at this minute, and something that's uh, commonly being called lockdown fatigue that we're seeing seeing across mm-hmm. Australia right now. And I'm seeing I'm seeing some people really uh, taking it and saying, well, what can I do with this? And there's some really good news stories. Craig, uh, I know you. It, there's a lot of good things coming out, but you mentioned mental health and domestic violence, so I thought I'd um, step in, George. Uh, you know, there too are the areas that we're hearing where there's big challenges at the moment. Domestic violence has gone up because everyone's in lockdown, they're stressed. And when there's all a stressful situation, domestic violence is to increase, anxiety levels are high. What is your take on all these? Um, how, is there a positive side to that? I'm seeing some, some members of our community doing some amazing things that are addressing some of those things. If I may give you this, this example, we have a number of people um, throughout my electorate and certainly probably right across the country that, uh, that are stranded. Um, they're either financially stranded, they can't get out to buy the, the necessities they need, or they're isolated due to COVID-19. And what I've seen over the last few weeks, and it, it just takes my breath away, I've seen the Muslim community, the Hindu community, the Sikh community and the Christian community all come together and on a daily basis they're preparing and delivering around a thousand meals a day in the northern suburbs. It just takes your breath away. A thousand a day. In the order that, of a thousand. That brings a, day. a whole new meaning. That brings a whole new meaning to the term inclusive, uh, Craig. Indeed, and it goes to some of the issues Zale is talking about in terms of mental health and family violence. There's some assistance packages, essential packages being provided to these families and these individuals that gives them some comfort in the day. Now, to be fair, some of them don't want to declare who they are, and quite frankly, that's okay with me. More than happy to leave it on their doorstep, ring the doorbell and step away. So they get to preserve their self-esteem, they can do something about their mental health, but they do know that we care about them. Do they understand that, uh, do we understand that certain cultures uh, find it a a little harder than others to say, we need assistance, we need help? You know, primarily that's what worries me. We are are doing in the order of a thousand meals a day, but how big is this number? Uh, And my, Mm. my, my call to people is reach out. Give me, tell me your name is John Smith for all I care. We won't want to identify you necessarily, but we do want to help you. Uh, what's the one thing that you've learnt uh, in the in the last couple of weeks? I've the biggest lesson some, that's come out of this. I've seen some innovation uh, by by businesses that has really both surprised me and delighted me. For example, there's a company that manufactures, a small manufacturer, that makes those um, swinging uh, wheels, uh, casters for hospital beds. And um, with the advent of of this this pandemic, um, they have chased international markets where they wouldn't have done so in the past because they they struggle against the the cost parameters around some of our lower labour countries, lower labour cost countries. Um, But there's a company in in Melbourne that uh, make these wheels uh, that have bid for a contract uh, in the US. And I'm delighted to tell you they have won that contract and they're producing 30,000 of those casters per week. They've added two two shifts. Uh, they've employed more people. They're packaging up and putting them into the belly of a jumbo jet that heads uh, internationally uh, every, every few days. And the remarkable, innovative lady that runs it, Joe Falshaw, is just amazing. Um, here's, here's a good news story. 
we're doing something on an international scale as a result of COVID-19. Whereas people are saying to me, oh, manufacturer's dead. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to the funeral. Uh, manufacturer's dead. It's all, it's all not going so well. <laughs> um, but, here's, but here's a company that stepped up and said, let's, let's find an opportunity here rather than tell, tell, uh, tell everybody things are bad. You, you, you have an, uh, um, a background of uh, economics. You understand uh, the, the vagaries of the markets. What have you made of this challenge to the biggest uh, markets in the world? I, I know you've, you've given us a small sample of what's happening in the northern metropolitan region, which has excited you, but let's look Australia-wide. Are we being smart enough? Are we seeing that we have to be uh, a lot more prepared and maybe bring some of those businesses that we've sent offshore back to Australia and see some of the, the uh, production that uh, has closed over the last 30, 40 years, maybe start, rethink, uh, reimagine, as you touched on earlier, um, and do things a little bit differently, but do them because we need them. You know, and what then there's we rural can... Australia, which we should not neglect as well. And no, exactly. indeed, indeed. Let me let me touch on that firstly. Then I have to tell you one of the most exciting things I'm seeing over the last uh, few weeks is the the energy and tenacity of the wholesale fruit and vegetable market out in Epping. They are doing amazing things with, in conjunction with our agricultural business right across uh, Australia uh, and also helping um, that food production. We do some good manufacturing that supports rural and regional Australia as well. When Ford and Holden and Toyota and Nissan stopped making cars in this country, people said it was doomsday here. That's the end of manufacturing. Well, it is not. We are still making great products, even in the automotive sector, in the aftermarket area as well. We're great exporters of that. And I think to answer your question, George, um, we're going to become clever about this. We are going to say we can do it here. We can work collectively with, uh, with the workforce, uh, with governments and with our markets to produce some fantastic things here in this country. Well, so Craig, I, I think uh, we need you uh, on mainstream media to Craig, it excites media more. <laughs> it does, and we need you on mainstream media, like, you know, boosting everyone's morale because we don't get these sort of stories much on mainstream media, do we? <laughs> well, you know, so like how is the, how is the media Pol cope with it, Craig? How is the media cope with it? Uh, just, just reflecting for a little while, can, can they can do a better job, surely? Well, it's really dangerous you asking me that question, George, as a <laughs> while media man. But but I have to I have to say to you that um, uh, for a period of time uh, on on TV in this country it was CSI everything CSI Miami CSI yes. New York yes. CSI News CSI Current mm -hmm. Affair it's gone to COVID everything now and I have to tell you um, when we've got through this pandemic there's not going to be much news left for the news services because they seem to be filled with with stories about how bad things are my challenge to news directors in this country is find some joy. Find some good news stories. Find some positive stuff that we can say to the Australian population, we can get through this together. We're tough, we're resilient, and these are the good things that are going to happen, and here's some of them right now. I suggest you ring Peter Hitchener and give him the lowdown ASAP. He'll, he'll, he'll smarten things up. He Craig Ondaatje. That's a good point. It's, uh, it's always a joy to talk to you. Uh, you and I need to get our football teams playing again. Um, are we likely to see sport get uh, get a, uh, a kick start in the next month or so? Or are we still waiting uh, with bated breath? Oh, look, I, I would like to see us all get to back to uh, the new normal life, if we can, um, yeah. whatever that means. And I think new normal life includes spending more time with families and enjoying the things, the basic things we take in life, opposed to being fast moving consumers. So I'd like to see us get back to sport and all those recreational things soon, but I think we've got to get through this. A little more patience, and I think we'll be in a good place. Craig Ondarchi, thank you for joining us on Ramadan Conversations. Really appreciate it. Ramadan Karim to you all. Have a blessed, prosperous time, and, um, and may you stay healthy and prosperous.